everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT. Let me put on the glasses, I look more distinguished that way. We're doing another Twitter thread, I can't get enough of these, and uh, algorithmically, neither can you either. Uh, today we are going to be talking about a series of cards that annoy me in particular. Every few sets, Konami releases cards that, despite the fact that this game is made for eight or nine year olds, um, are almost impossible for anyone but NASA scientists to read. So today, we're going to be looking at some cards that are impossible to figure out, cards that don't do what they say on the tin, or generally cause huge ruling dilemmas. And we're going to begin with this one, Inspector Border. Inspector Border, can it be normal or special summoned unless you control a monster? Neither player can activate monster effects unless the number of monster effects that player has previously activated that turn is less than the number of monster effect card types currently on the field. Ritual Fusion, Synchro Xyz, Pendulum, and Link. If an effect's activation was negated, it counts towards the total for that turn. Only count effects that were activated when a monster was face up on the field. So, half of this card is parentheticals, which should clue you into the fact that it's ridiculous. No text of a card should resemble an LSAT problem. And yet, here we are. Dyer actually coming up with a good one for once. That's new. Musical Sumo Dice Games is a rank 6. It says, at the start of your opponent's battle phase, if this card is in the main monster zone, roll a six-sided die and move this card directly to that many, one to six, main monster zones clockwise. And if a monster is already in that zone, it moves to attach that monster to this card as material. If this effect causes the monster's number material to exceed six, you win the duel. So this is impossible to comprehend. Basically, it means every battle phase of the person who does not control this card, you move it in a circle clockwise, a number of spaces denoted by a die roll, and if you are able to get six materials on it because it's landed on six monsters, you win. It's like musical chairs plus alt win condition plus this unbelievable sub game that I can't believe made it into Black Border. Shouts out to On The Card Proper, they are moving counterclockwise. Mystical Ref Panel, a great, great example. Activate only when a spell card that targets a player is activated. The effect of that spell card is applied to the other player instead. This card, I have no idea what it does. Instead of figuring out like what would be a proper problem solving card text version of this card, there is just a list of every spell card it affects maintained by a third party that people cross-reference. You thought I was joking? Look, here it is. Every single spell card that it affects. Ugh, this... I feel bad for Snow. Got a bad rap. One of the first cards printed under the new problem-solving card text and unfortunately was a casualty of it. If this card is discarded to the graveyard by a card effect, colon, if it was discarded from your hand to your graveyard by an opponent's card effect, comma, you can target one monster on your opponent's graveyard, semicolon, add a Dark World card from your deck to your hand, comma, then special summon that target in parentheses, if any, end parentheses, in face-up defense position. This text has been updated to this. Every single trap monster is a ruling nightmare. If you look up their ruling databases, each one of them is like a goddamn driving instruction book. It's only yesterday I learned that Shade Brigandine doesn't get banished by Cosmic Cyclone if it's chained to it. So the Paleozoics deserve special mention as the only trap monster archetype that was really ever playable. These monsters were a disaster. Uh, the week they were released, um, people at Sneaks had no idea how to play them. Judges were not consistent in describing how you could summon them. Some of them said it was mandatory. Some of them said it was optional. Some of them said turn player got first crack. Some of them said other player got first crack because turn player was the activator. Uh, some people said you had to activate all of them sequentially in a chain when a trap was activated. Unbelievably frustrating trying to figure out how to get these monsters onto the field. And then once they're onto the field, God forbid you Book of Moon them. There's a small sect of cards that have what I refer to as failure conditions, where the card's effect changes if something within the effect just doesn't work. Prime example, thank god this card was never meta relevant because an illegal activation ruling is a nightmare. So as of right now, if you activate something like Reinforcement of the Army with no Warriors in deck, uh, you call a judge over, the judge gives you a warning, and you put it back into your hand. This was not always the case. And some cards, like Crop Circles, have an additional effect that triggers if it's activated illegally. If you fail to find a monster to special summon, you take 2,000 damage. Like, if you just look through your deck and are not able to find one, just take two. Yeah, so this card, uh, this card's not real. Um, <laughs> there is a very, very funny ruling regarding this card, which may be known to a lot more players now that these cards are available in the new pack, uh, but a Legendary Ocean's name is Umi. Now, that doesn't mean its name is Umi on the field. It means its name is Umi in deck building, which means you can't include Umi 
Lemuria the Forgotten City, Pacifist the Phantasm City, and a Legendary Ocean all in the same deck. Gotta pick three. What makes a Legendary Ocean more interesting is there is a searcher for it in Warrior of Atlantis. It can send itself from the hand of the graveyard to search a Legendary Ocean, a card that does not exist. Konami, however, has said that Warrior of Atlantis works because of course it does. I mean, that'd be ridiculous. Pegasus Twin Saber has a... It's a negation that negates at the point of resolution. Once per turn, while this card is equipped to a monster, you can negate a monster effect activated on your opponent's field. So if your opponent activates, let's say, the effect of Alistair the Invoker, you can't say, I'll negate with Pegasus Twin Saber. You say, that's fine. Alistair's effect moves to point of resolution, at which point I will negate it with Pegasus Twin Saber. That negation does not start a chain, so your opponent is not able to negate that negation with their own negation. It is disastrous. The funniest thing this card can do because it negates at the point of resolution is negate super polymerization. Abyss Actor Leading Lady is epic. Uh, as we all know, cards that say when you can can miss timing under certain conditions. Cards that say if cannot. This card has a when you can and and if in the same effect. So the second effect here, when this card is destroyed by battle, comma, or if this card in its opponent's monster zone is destroyed by an opponent's card effect, colon, you can set one Abyss Script spell directly from your deck. Can it miss timing? Yes, under both conditions. Why? I don't know. I have no idea. This is one for Coder. Did you know that if you place a Malefic World with Malefic Territory with this card, it keeps the targeting protection even if the territory is popped? Oh my god. When this card is activated, you can activate a Malefic World from your deck. While that card is in the field zone, neither player can target a card in the field zone with card effects. That is not a continuous effect of Malefic Territory. It's an effect applied to the field spell. The battle phase is a disaster in general, but I hate reading this card specifically because it has four damage step effects, and I don't think you can respond to any of them. The equipped monster gains 300 attack, if the equipped monster would be destroyed by battle, return this card to its owner's hand instead. Then, destroy one monster, except the one that battled the equipped monster, and inflict 600 damage to your opponent. After that, it just keeps going! Special summon an evil token on your opponent's side of the field. During the turn, this card is returned to the hand. You cannot use Vicious Claw from your hand. What the fuck? Dark Flat Top, I know I've talked about this before on this channel, but it's just so funny. Once per turn, you can target a Reactor or a Flying Fortress Skyfire in your graveyard, special summon that target. Flying Fortress Skyfire is a very powerful card with a very difficult summoning condition, and this card says summon it ignoring its summoning conditions. However, you can't. You can't do it. Flying Fortress Skyfire has to be first summoned by using its own effect. It's printed on the card, and writing ignoring its summoning conditions does not override that quality. So it can only summon back a Flying Fortress Skyfire that has been summoned correctly once already. When your opponent draws for their normal draw in their draw phase, your opponent discards one card they just drew. Okay. So, in order to activate this card, your opponent has to be informed in advance that you have a card that will respond to the act of them drawing, so that they don't draw the card and immediately shuffle their hand, causing an irreparable game state. This is a disaster of a card. Uh, it has caused many rulings nightmares, especially during formats where it was somewhat playable and was basically a free win to the player who played it because the opponent wasn't prepared. To prove that we've learned nothing, they're still printing cards like this in like 2019. Okay, so Twin-Headed Behemoth is pretty funny. If this card on the field is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, special summon it during the end phase of this turn with a thousand attack and a thousand defense, you can only use this effect once per duel. Now, that effect applies to this specific card copy of Twin-Headed Behemoth. If you were playing two copies of Twin-Headed Behemoth, and then they got shuffled back into the deck with the Transmigration Prophecy, how would you know if the one that you drew had or had not activated its effect? The way they resolved this back in the day was by limiting it. They were like, oh, it's gonna be a once per duel, because you're only getting one. Uh, Boss Room is a disastrous card. Um, a significant number of cards have this effect now, um, and you're gonna see more of them as the Dark World cards come into play and change the effects of cards to be your opponent discards a card. But this one says, when your opponent activates a card or effect in response to the activation of your generator card or effect, discard a card, that activated effect becomes each player draws one card. This makes sense for cards that are activating an effect or single use spell traps. 
But what happens if you chain it to the activation of a continuous card? Does the card stick around? Does the first activation just cause you to draw one card? The card goes to the graveyard. Shouts out to a real one. Pole position responsible for an unbelievable amount of loops and ridiculous judge situations. Now forever forbidden to the Yu-Gi-Oh graveyard by the implementation of a rule which determines the problem card and immediately sends it to the grave. If pole position is on the field and I'm a judge, I'm coming over there, throwing that thing in the garbage and telling you to get out. Anyway, this was fun. You know, children's card game, etc., etc. But I think the real takeaway from this one is when someone tells you to read the card or calls you stupid because you don't understand a card in Yu-Gi-Oh, show them this video and tell them to go fuck themselves. See you next time. I'm gonna piss.